Welcome in, folks. Kevin Thomas, John Epps here, moving the chains. Our week nine high school football preview show, John. A lot of huge games on the docket. Region championships on the line, John. Playoff seating on the line. Just some big time matchups. Some big time name games too yes. that are always big, no matter the consequences. But this year, we got some really good ones. Uh, you know, last week I feel like a couple of headlines: injuries. We had a lot of big injuries. You know, you know, Bennett Judy goes down for Hillcrest. Should be okay. Brayshawn Littlejohn goes down for Gaffney. Not sure his status yet. Uh, Austin Copeland, quarterback safety at Clinton, goes down. Not sure his status yet for this week's game either. A lot of big injuries across the state. Uh, but just a, a lot of good football again, though, last week, man. This is this another fun week, but this week should be really good. Lots of, like I said, high-powered matchups there. This is you guys' first time. We really appreciate that. Share our video. Like our video. Uh, follow our page here at Moving Chains. We do a live preview show every Tuesday night at about 7. We'll get a lot of preview all the shows. We'll do that all throughout the playoffs as well. So definitely tune in for all those shows. A lot of really good content coming up for you guys. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram at Moving Chains, M-O-V-A-N-C-H-A-I-N-S. Also, our brand-new website, MovingChains.com. We've got our message board on there, John, our locker room talk trash on there. Get all our information there. One thing, too, I thought about, we've got all the standings and stuff on that page. You can go check out our 2022 season page. You can see whose record is what, what the standings are, anywhere from 5A all the way down to Skiza. Even Skiza 8-man is on there. So check out all the standings on our uh, on our website, movingchains.com. Check out our podcast, Apple, uh, Google, Spotify, etc. We do a preview show, Drill Hater, which I do on Sundays. It comes out audio-only version for that. Friday Night Spaces on Twitter is a lot of fun. We're doing basically live scoreboard tours on Friday nights there for that. Interviews each, each and every week, pretty much. We had uh, Coach Stuart Young from Saluda on last. We got a couple big ones lined up for next week, too, heading into some big matchups. Definitely stay tuned for all of that. Um, John, anything else I'm missing before we get into some of these big, big games here? No, I think we once we start talking about these games and schedule, it's all going to speak for itself. There's just a, a ton of big numbers in the left column and little numbers in the right column for some of these games. We've got uh, big, you know, this we talk about non-region play at the beginning of the year, then we talk about getting in the region play and positioning the playoffs. Well, now is the real your last two weeks of the regular season. Here now is the real meat and potatoes. Yes, uh, being a region champion, uh, you know. Don Slew's coach after that Sean Thurman game, I, it dawned on me how big of a deal region championships yeah, are. Yeah, get that home to field these kids, huge, man. To That's these it. kids, you know, because I'm looking at these games, and it's easy for us to say sitting here comfortably, you know, at eh, region championship, cool and great, but it really comes down to the playoffs. Yeah. You know, what can you do in the playoffs? But these two weeks are, are very, very important to these kids, very important to a lot of these teams to be able to call yourself a region champion. Yes. You know, it's – it's um. This is big time football here these last two weeks for sure. Yeah, let's get into it, John. This is our week nine preview show from Secured Advantage. Go to our Kona games of the week here. Our first one, Clinton at Chester, a region title on the line. You know, this is a, a kind of one of those new regions too, John, where Clinton and Chester were not together last year, so they haven't played much lately. So this is kind of a new matchup for them. Uh, fun to see this one here going on at Clinton eight and zero, Chester six and three. Clinton caught off a 59-21 over Woodruff. Chester, a 33-13 victory over Emerald. Clinton averaging 52 points offensively, giving up 19 defensively. Chester, 30-24, and 24, John. I feel like Clinton probably just has too much firepower in this game. How do you feel about it? I think so, too. I think, you know, Clinton is definitely the superior team mm -hmm. in this matchup. But there's a couple things that, you know, it's just each week that goes by, we see these games where you have a – Clinton type team playing a Chester type team. We'll talk about, hey, this could be a good game. And then on Sundays, you and Jarrell are talking about the upset. You yep. know, uh, I, I'm siding with Clint in this ball game. But there's a lot of things, I think, maybe not so much in the Cyclones' favor, but is good for them. You know, obviously, they get to host this game. Mm -hmm. They've been playing pretty good football lately. Yep. Um, they're just a good team. This they is are going to be, you know, you look at what Clinton. What they've done this year, they have rolled. Yes. They have absolutely Haven't rolled. really had any close matchups, honestly. And, you know, you, you go through the schedule. You know, who's the best thing they've played all year? It, you know, you, South Aiken, maybe. maybe. South Aiken. Yeah. The blue out South Aiken. Um, maybe Lawrence early He's in the year. He's playing better now. Yeah, Lawrence um, played they, better football. You know, they played them in week two. Yep. You know, this is, I think they're definitely superior. But this Cyclone team is going to be the toughest team they've played yeah. all year, I think. And Cheshire's been playing good football. And Chester, another thing I think is good for them in this matchup, they've played some really good teams. Yes, they have. You look at their out-of-region schedule. They play South Point and Catawba Ridge. Uh, South Point, right before they started to 
get Kinda all the like gas that. a little bit on their season. Um, but Catawba originally a very good football. They were competitive. It wasn't, you know, a last round kind of ball game, but they yeah. were competitive enough. Had a chance to win those games, really. I mean, in yeah. the second half, you think. Yeah. And, you know, they'd be a very good fifth central team yep. earlier in the season. I, I know they're a smaller school, but still, um, talent's talent. I think it's going to be a pretty fun game. Mm-hmm. I, I see Clinton win this ball game, but, you know, Chester's got what it takes. If, uh, yeah, I love the quarterback play. Yeah. Uh, if, if they, things have got to go right. A lot of things have to go right for Chester. But don't I would not count them out of this ball game. Yeah, Clinton going for their first region title since 2007. It's been a long time coming for the Red Devils there. Led on offense by Bryson James, Jai Sean Copeland, Jane Robinson at running back. Defensively, you know, Bryson James probably one of the playing linebacker who's a stud there. Hezekiah Kennard up front is a really good player for those guys. They're also dangerous in the return game. You know, when we get these big matchups here, John, we always talk about if we need a big play from special teams or from the defense, whatever. These guys have had multiple games where either Copeland or James has taken the kick to the house. If you get one of those game changer in a, in a tight matchup for sure. I do worry about the quarterback, you know, being being probably out. Haven't seen for sure. I think I saw Zach make comment. I haven't, hadn't read Zach's comment yet about that. But if he's out, that does hurt you because he's actually a uh, quarterback and safety for them. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big loss there for those guys. But they've got a really good football team. Now, I like what they're doing there um, on Chester's side. They're, they're hard-nosed. They're tough, as always, under Coach Victor Floyd. Does a great job there coaching that squad. Quarterback Trooper Floyd does a good job running the show there. Malik McCullough is a really good running back for them. Hopkins, Evans, and Kennedy lead the defense there. And like you mentioned, John, they play some big teams. All three of their losses have been to 4A squads. Lancaster, South Point, and Tulsa Ridge. Three teams that are very good. You know, Lancaster, the worst of those three, and they're still not any bad. They're still not very bad. So, uh, tough matchup there for those guys. You know, you do worry, like, like I said, Clinton hadn't really been tested. So that worries you some, and especially Chester being at home. But I think the the loss of Copeland, if he doesn't play this weekend at quarterback, is stronger on the defensive side. I feel like with their offense kind of running almost a kind of a, like a wishbone veer, but it's out of like a pistol shotgun yeah, look. Yeah. They don't throw it a ton, so you got to find a guy who can just hand it off at the right places, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but him losing him on defense is big, but I don't think Chester can really take advantage of that because they don't throw the ball a ton, I feel like. So I'm going Clinton here behind Copeland and James running the ball. I think they win this one at home, or sorry, on the road, get their first region championship since 2007. I think so too, but if he is out, um, that that could be again another perfect storm for for Chester. And you, yeah. and you hope he can play. You hope he can play. You, you want everybody. You, you want everybody to be healthy and be able to play, especially in a big game like this. Yep. Um, so hopefully everybody's healthy and we have a good game. For sure, for sure. A couple comments here on that Clinton Chester game. Uh, James says hello, guys. Kevin says good evening. Great collegiate warrior goes, yeah, great. Another big win, locked up region last year, or last week, sorry, fifth year in a row. Zach says, good evening. General Red Devils got some bad news. MRI starting quarterback is he is a torn ACL. So he is out for the season. I mean, you hate to hear that. Uh, he was playing great for them. So that is a game changer there, John. Uh, backup quarterback playing. Daydream says, Louisville. Lions are playing great. Daydream. Bill says, what's up, guys? Bill, good to have you in here, man. Appreciate you. Tough loss for Greenwood last week. Uh, to West side's a tough one there, but still got some stuff to play for. Got Greenville coming up here as well. Big game they got to get get going. Zach says, yep, Clinton first region since 2007. James said he picked the Cyclones. Omar says torn ACL. Yeah, we hate to hit up my man. Uh, Zach says backup will be fine. He's already okay. started a game this year to get some confidence running the offense. Yeah, and like I okay. said, I think him on defense maybe is more of a loss than on offense, honestly. But tough loss there. Uh, I think we both like Clinton, but it should be a fun ball game over there in Cyclone country. Oh, yeah. Um, our I'm letting keep the lights on. That's true. That's true. Our second corner game of the week, the one game week that's not for region championship this week, John, is Christchurch at St. Joseph's. Two seven and one squads. Last year, these teams played twice. The first time Christchurch beat them in in uh, reg- or, uh, the regular season by six in overtime. <laughs> second matchup was in the playoffs. Christchurch won three to zero with a last minute field goal to win that one. Two great ball games. Christchurch came up a forty eight to six win over Dixie. St. Joe's had a bye last week. These teams are really similar, John. Uh, Christchurch averaging 43 offensively, going up 16 defensively. St. Joe's averaging 46 offensively, going up 13 defensively. Where do you lean here in this battle of you know, two heated re- region rivals here? Well, I, I like Christchurch in this game. Christchurch has been good all year. Mm-hmm. When they've stepped out of the state lines is when they've gotten some, some uh, trouble. Mm-hmm. But their defense is really good. So those stats are a little misleading because... You know, they gave up 40 in their one loss to uh, Asheville Christian, Atlanta. right? Atlanta. Um, four or against four against right, yeah. Atlanta, Atlanta. So, don't know how good they are. They must be pretty doggone good yeah. there. Uh, and they gave up 30 to Riverside. 
in a game that they won. Yeah. So, you know, and then uh, they played school in Asheville. Uh, they got 35. Other than that, they had been shutting everyone down. They, they had been very impressive. And what's so great about this game and this region, this is a region championship because you have juggernaut Southside Christian. Wait, next week. For Christ Church. Wait, yeah. That's going to be another terrific ball game next week. Uh, but St. Joseph's has been playing some good football themselves. That marquee win that they've got is knocking off Seneca mm-hmm. earlier, earlier in the season. And they had done a very good job of region play outside of that tough loss to Southside Christian, which um, Southside probably the best game they played all year Yeah, uh, when they came across St. Joe's a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a terrific ball game. I like Christchurch a little bit better. Christchurch has been, you know, one of the best teams, arguably the best team in 1A mm-hmm. really all season long. I think I've had them number one in my poll, mm-hmm. um, if not the whole season, just about the whole season. Yeah. Um, at least that's the – when we start doing the poll. Yeah, days, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I've had them number one. I think they are – Legit, arguably the best team in the state in 1A. Nothing against St. Joseph's. I just think Christchurch should be a little better. That, and that's, that defense is just so, that's going to be so tough um, for them to overcome. Yeah, that defense led by Ryan Coley, Carson Shaw, McMaster on defense there. Head coach, coach, head coach Quinn Hatfield does a great job. Offensively led by Woods Windham at quarterback. Dash Reader at running back. Went for 145 last week. Johnny's over 1,100 yards in the season, 25 touchdowns. Really explosive there at the running backs. So I think it was on seven carries last week, too. So, really got it done for those guys. Uh, St. Joe's led by quarterback Walker Woods. So we got Walker Wood at St. Joe's, Woods Wyndham at Christchurch, <laughs> the quarterback. So, keep that straight. Uh, running back there is William Gillespie. Defense led by Johnny Jaruszewski. My favorite player is really good. Tackler at the linebacker. I had 16, I think, in that win over Seneca earlier this year there. Really good team there with Tommy Sullivan, Trey Sanders on defense as well. Head coach Chris Goodman. I agree with you, you know. I think that uh, Crusher's a little bit better, a little more explosive, um, as I have played a little better schedule. I think a couple, couple better wins than what St. Joe's has. But I do wonder about coming off a bye for St. Joe's. How much does that help them? Extra prep, you know, extra extra week time in this game. and Because yeah, their only hope for St. Joe's, they've got to win this game and then hope that Crusher's knocks off Southside to kind of create a three-way tie in the region. Yeah. They've got to have this game. This is, this is the end of the season for them right here. Because if you lose this one, Good chance you're falling to that three seed line yeah. on the road in the playoffs. You gotta have this ball game. Um, I still think I'm leaning Christchurch. I'm a big Dash Reader fan. I like what Coach Hatfield's doing there. I'm going Christchurch and the Cavs, but it should be a really fun game over at St. Joe's Friday night. Yeah, I hope we have a carbon copy of what we got last year. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. great to get that game twice last yep. year. Uh, so th- this is going to be. I mean, this is certainly. I know people may forget about one A from time to time. This is going to be a super good game. Yeah, if you a lot were. of talent on the field. And this game is in uh, is St. Joe's, I believe. Right? Joe's. Yep. So if you're in the upstate Greenville area, uh, definitely a game worth checking out, uh, especially for Greenville County. Yeah, that'll be a fun for sure. Uh, a couple comments here. Let's see. Bossman says, Strong Thurman in the house. Strong Thurman, man, they continue to roll. Oh. Big winner of Pillion last week. Uh, really good game against Silver Bowl. This we'll talk about here in a minute. That's a big one there. Very big now. Bradley Ramsey says, hello. Bradley, talking about your Gaffney Indians here in just a second, man. Uh, our third Kona game of the week here, John. It's a big one every year. Dorman at Gaffney. 8-0 Dorman, 5-2 Gaffney. Dorman coming off a close win over Burns, 25-22. They were up 22 to nothing. Yeah. Let Burns come back, make a last-second field goal, 30 seconds to go to win that game. I think it was 25 seconds left, actually. Gaffney, kind of a sleepwalk win last week. Didn't play their best. Beat Bowling Springs 19-7 there. Dorman averaging 39 offensively, going up 21 defensively. Gaffney averaging 23 on offense, 20 on defense. Dorman led by the running game. You know, Demarius Foster had 175 last week. Uh, you know, DJ Gath, Mark Anderson up front. Two D1 guys at the tackle spots are tough to, tough to, to you know, stay in front of all night yeah. long. DJ Porter kind of playing the wide receiver and the Wildcat quarterback spot there gets the run game going for them. Quarterback Hudson Talley playing a little better as the season is going on. A guy like on defense, Brandon Teamer, making a lot of plays for them out there. I like him a lot uh, on the defensive side for them. Gaffney on the other side, slowly starting to play better and better. You know, struggled early in the year, obviously. Had the South Point loss week zero. Uh, had the weird game against Union there where it got canceled first quarter. But they were kind of in a, a, a 7-6 game there. Lost to Mallard Creek game that you were at. Slowly starting to play better and better. I uh, didn't play their best game honestly, last week, like we said. But kind of a look-ahead spot, honestly. Uh, but still got the win. That's what matters in region play. Led by quarterback Grayson Lofton. Duke committed, everybody knows him. Big-time player. Um, you know, running backs, Quayshon Tate. 
And the freshman, Jaden McDowell, is going to be special, really good player Definitely for those player. guys. Um, re uh, receiver, Sugar Jeffries, huge having him back. Uh, it, I think he had four TDs two weeks ago in his first game back. It has made an incredible difference having him back in so many ways, giving a lot to some other option. Um, and then taking some pressure off Amazing Little John, yep. too. Yep. And he was a guy that Mallard Creek was able to, well, honestly, Mallard Creek tried, tried to. <laughs> to key in on him. And uh, he, he's just that good of a player. But, uh, yeah, Gaffney, Gaffney healthy is a different ball team. Yes. A different ball team. Uh, and, you know, that can be said for anybody, but it is, um, when I say different, competitive to one of the best teams in the state. Yeah. Um, so, I, for me, the big key in this one is if Rachel Will Jones will be able to play. Yeah, and I believe he's still a game-time decision. They hadn't really announced where the other yet about that. That could be just kind of an in-house. There's no reason to say it. And just you know, no. There's no reason to tell them what you're going to do there. No. You know? no. He's kind of the catalyst here at linebacker for those guys. Nathan Johnson kind of playing some D-line, a little bit of stand-up backer, too. Does a great job for them. Um, you know, Clay Cook, or sorry, uh, yeah, Cook there on the D-line for them is really good, along with uh, King Dowdle. Some of those folks have been playing some good football for those guys. This is just a – it's a fun matchup, man. You know, Dorman was rolling all year long. Yeah. Last two weeks to play some tight ball games, you know, a 13 12 win over Malden, 25 point two over Burns. Like, I know, like, those are big time programs, especially the Burns game is a tough rivalry game. Those are two games we thought they'd win by a little bit more than that. They're kind of sneaking by a few here, John. If you do that against Gaffney, I don't know if you can if you can afford to do that. No, you can't. And, you know, what I think, again, this game is at the reservation. Mm -hmm. That's tough. I, I think the big thing, if, if we've got full health on that defensive line for Gaffney, this is going to be a tough, tough win for Dorman. Yeah. They want to run the ball. I and mean, they, they yeah. got some options out there. You know, they, it's not just one guy. They, they got two, three guys they can hand that ball off to. They're in good shape. Um, but that's what Gaffney wants you to do. Gaffney dares you to run the ball. Yeah. Go ahead. Try it. That defensive line, that linebacker core, it's very good. I, I think the secondary is okay. Mm -hmm. But that front that front line of the defense, you know, it's put – Seven, eight guys in the box. That's where Gap really can make a difference, and it's really a lot. Yeah. If they're healthy, Dorman may have a hard time running the ball consistently as they've done the majority of the year. The offense has had some trouble the mm -hmm. last couple of weeks. And what worries me, too, uh, I don't love Dorman's downfield passing. Very true. If they've got to, if they got to make, get in the end zone by throwing the ball downfield, uh, you know, 20, 25 times Friday, that's not going to – I don't think that's going to bode well. That's going to put Gaffney in a, in a very good position. And, you know, on the other side, Dorman defense is not bad. They're not. They're not bad at all. They're not as good as that Gaffney defense, though. And Gaffney, is, you know, they can run the ball. you got Loftus that can – you know, he can do everything. Yeah. He's got enough speed to get outside the pocket by himself some time. You've got Jeffries and Little John out there. you got a lot of weapons. And this is a game where the, the – the game is going to be won on that defensive line when Dorman's got the football. If Dorman can run the football, yeah. they probably win this game. If they can't run the football as well as they have been, I got Gap. Yeah, and I think Gaffney is going to win this game. Yeah, one more thing that worries me, you know, it's a, look at that Burns game last week. Dorman dominated all the stats. Burns had no offensive game plan at all. I couldn't do anything throwing the ball, couldn't do anything running the ball. Dorman dominated and still, on, you know, almost lost that football game. They had 135 penalty yards last week, John. That, Coach Curtis has got to hate that. Yeah. Um, and that's not indicative of a Coach Curtis team. No, not at all. You know, you, not I, at all. I don't expect that. You, I wouldn't think that would be a yeah. problem Friday. Granted, reservation. Yes. That, that crowd's going to be ready to rock and roll. It's going to be It's gonna be quite yeah. a fire. It'll be the perfect game for some kind of, you know, crazy gap thing to happen, like a pick six, you know, a fumble <laughs> return, like, there's a, there's a term for that, isn't it? Yeah. Tell you Google what, man. I've, I've, been, uh, I've been going back and forth all day on this game, and I think it comes down to what I wrote down here. I just I started all caps reservation. Like, that's like that. That's, that's what I'm – but at the same time, like, Coach Curtis, first game against Gaffney ever, first game against Coach Jones, like, he wants to make a statement. I don't know, man. This is literally a toss-up for me, I think, in this one. If Bryson Little John doesn't play Dorman wins this game, I think. If he does, I think Gaffney wins. I like that. I think that's probably pretty I good analysis. That's, that's where I'm at right here. I think that's pretty good analysis. I, and I hate to put it on one kid because it's not just one. Right. It's a team game. But that, to me, is the little detail that makes the difference in this in this matchup. Yeah. Going to be a, a whale of ball game one way or the other. Um, 
reservation is always a great time, always a fun time. It will be a heck of a matchup. Uh, a couple comments here. Bradley says, hope all is well. A little worried about the Indians this, well, after last Friday. Anniversary of Little John Andrew prays okay. Uh, Patrick says, perfect time. Yeah, appreciate you getting in here just in time. Patrick says, uh, Brayshawn is a uh, game time decision. Yep, yep, that makes okay. sense. That makes sense. James says he hates it, but he picked Dorman over those Indians. <laughs> Uh, Patrick says, we'll come down to one or two plays. Yeah. He said, that's a bold statement, John <laughs> I, I, that Okay, I understand. I, I get that. Man, oh, man. That that will be a heck of a ball game there between Dorman and Gaffney, two heavyweights in 5A, two top five 5A teams as well. Um, you know, looking back middle of the season, we didn't think we'd have this matchup being that big of a deal because Gaffney was struggling, but they really turned it yeah. on. And uh, it's going to be a fun game for those guys. Dorman has been good, good all year. Yeah, after and, after week three of the season, Gaffney fans want to have been saying, oh, the, no. the Dorman game is going to be a really, really, really big deal. Yeah, yeah. And here we are. There we go. Look at now our fourth and final Kona game of the week, John. Woodland at Barnwell, 8-0 versus 8-0. Two region opponents, 2-3 and three in the polls. This is a massive game. I think it's the end that Jarrell and I are going to be at. Super excited for that. Woodland came from behind to beat Wade Hampton 21 to 14 last week, down 14 to 6 at half. Came back to win that game. Barnwell cruised past Ridge on the Hardy Bill 56 to 6. Woodland averaging 43 points on offense, 18 on defense, led by quarterback Sedarian Harrison. Really a, a great dual threat athlete, getting offers every week at receiver. They got from VT and Virginia now. A couple of those I've seen pop up. So he's a big time athlete there. Jalen Ingram running the ball, receiver Clarence Simmons. And obviously everybody knows Cam Pringle, the big 2024 recruit of the offensive line for those guys. Stud there for them. Defensively led by Aaron Pulliam. Great player, has had multiple 10-plus, 12-plus tackle games. Big game again last week. Uh, you know, you also get some defense out of Simmons there at the, at the DB spot. And it's really fun to watch when they put Cam Pringle at D-line in those big situations. <laughs> That's a big body. He's tough to push around up front. He's a great player for them both sides of the ball. Barnwell averaging 43 offensively. Just under 10 points a game through eight games of the season. That's pretty impressive there, John. Led by running back Tyler Smith. Had 192 last week. He's got 16.25 on the season, averaging just over 200, 203 per game right now. Just a beast there. Receiver Clay Pender, really explosive outside. They had not really had to use him much this year, honestly. They'd better run the ball in everybody's throat and win it. But he's a good piece out there for those guys. Uh, quarterback, you know, Cam Alston, I think he's completed... 90% of his passes the last two games. Yeah, I saw I saw somewhere 92. Yeah, pretty pretty, pretty impressive, huh? Pretty impressive for, uh, uh, for the young quarterback cool. there for those guys. That's a B plus. Yes, <laughs> defensively led by Maurice Odom and Shea Whitfield. And when they need to, they put Tyler Smith at linebacker, put Clay Pender at DB. They've got some studs there at Barnwell, man. Uh, I will say what worries me about this. Woodland's been in some close games. They have. They've won some close games. They beat Hanahan. They beat Wade Hampton. Barnwell hasn't really been tested yet. Uh, do you think Willie could pull off the upset? It's hard to say it's an upset when they're two 8-0 teams, right. 3-2 and two in the state. Okay, let's just say, do you think Willie can win the game, not necessarily upset? Absolutely. Yeah. They can absolutely win the game. I don't think they do. Absolutely, they can win the game. My, my deciding factor, I feel like, in this game for me, Tyler Smith, mm -hmm. number four. Uh, that guy, he could play anywhere. Yeah. You know, he, uh, You know, it's every week we're looking at we're getting the numbers from from Friday, and every week, you know, it's we, we could give him a t-shirt about every yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, new highlights every week. Just run over, run over guys. I mean, he, he's a stud. He's a yeah, stud. it's not just the offensive line does a great job. Yeah, Barnwell's a great team, but yeah, he is, he is. Tr it's not just me. He's not getting touched till he's sitting right down the field. No, he is. Yeah. He's paving his way through. Um, really, really, a uh, really great play. I think he's the difference in this one. But I expect this to be epic. Awesome, awesome ball game. It should be. It should be. You know, Barnwell, I've been really high on them all year long. Um, I think they really kind of took to the next level, that Bamberg game. Shutting out Bamberg, yeah. beating Bamberg handily was a big win for those guys. Yeah, I think everybody knows the names on offense, like we say, Smith, Pander, et cetera, et cetera. The defense averaging under 10, allowing less than 10 a game is super impressive for me. You know, Sedarian Harrison is going to be tough to stop. Uh, but Wade Hampton kind of contained those guys last yep. week, over yep. 21. And to beat Barnwell, I think you got to score 30 to beat Barnwell. And I think the Barnwell defense is going to hold them under that. I think Barnwell, too explosive, a little too much on defense. I think they win this game at home over at WW uh, Carter Stadium. So you think winners winners got to score 30? I think so. Yeah, I, I don't see both of them doing that. No. Nah. Um, yeah, this is – gosh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not even there. It could be. You know, it could be. 28, 24, 28, 27 kind of game. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is certainly a game, and – for those folks down um, down there in Dorchester, uh, great great ball game. 
Yeah, I'll get it too. Uh, this is this is a big time of especially for two A alone. Yeah, we we talk about Oceanside every week about how great they are. You know, if whoever wins this game, that, that's you know, that's huge. Do you look out of the bracket from Oceanside? They're not playing to the lower state championship. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's a big time big time benefit. And here's where you talk about all right, you got region championship on the line, and then how far you can put off playing Oceanside. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the playoffs potentially. Uh, it's another big deal for this one. This should be a whale of a ball game. Should be great. I'm excited. If you guys are down there, come say hello. I think Robert's probably going to be there. Follow this couple of folks. So definitely say hello to Jarell and I. It should be a great ball game there. A couple comments. Omar says Barnwell by a lot. Woodland's going to get pulverized. <laughs> Could happen, man. That Barnwell team's yeah. tough, but you know Woodland has got some nice wins too. They got a, a good squad over there. A lot of good players for them now, John. And our fifth and final corner game, like our skis game of the week. Colin Prep at Buford Academy, a big two A clash here. Colin Prep eight and zero, Buford five and two. Colin Prep shut out Carolina twenty two nothing last week. Buford snuck by Thomas Hayward with a great win though, thirty one twenty seven over those guys. Colin Prep averaging thirty four offensively, twelve defensively. Um, Buford averaging thirty five offensively, twenty six defensively. I'm leading Colin Prep early. I think John, what are you thinking here? I think so too. Uh, the fact that they're undefeated, hmm. uh, and, and you know. Buford's played well. They have. But what they got scares, some nice wins. What scares me, and you know, a couple of weeks ago, Williamsburg. They, Put it they, on. Yeah. They, yeah. they waxed them. And I don't, uh, you know, I know you can't, each week could be a different game. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the Skeleton Prep team, I don't see somebody doing that to Carlton Prep. Yeah. I, I think Carlton's a little bit better of a team. Here. They got to go on the road, though. They do. They got to go on the road. They do. So, I, it'd be a pretty good ball game, um, but I'm going to go Carlton. Yeah, Colin and Prep, quarterback Cole Davis, also the leading rusher for them. Uh, running back Hayden Williams, receiver Caden Crosby. Davis led by Gus Warren and Noah Cateron. Euford led by quarterback Braden Deneen, who kind of plays both ways, had a big pick last week in the game uh, in that win there. Really a dual threat, but the running game is what really you know gets them going. Devontae Green, Jackson Porterwick, both had over 100 yards last week. And Tayshawn Hayward, I think, had 60-plus on like six or seven carries. A really explosive guy there for those guys. But last week they had lots of penalties, lots of turnovers, and I think – if you do that against Colin and Prep, they're just going to grind it out, run the ball, be it behind you, be to catch up. I like Colin and Prep in a close one here, but it should be a really fun ski the two-way matchup on Friday night. Yeah, they got to clean that up. You can't yep. even stay prone against a, an 8-0 no team. That's what, that'll eat you a lot for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Let's give a quick shout-out now uh, to the, our other games league. Like I said, our games league from Colin, we had uh, Ch Clinton at Chester, Christchurch at St. Joe's, Dorman at Gaffney, Woodland at Barnwell, and then our skis game week, Colin and Prep at Buford Academy, John. Let's give a quick shout-out to our friends before we get into the 5A slate, if you want to do that there. Uh, Security Advantage Federal Credit Union offer much lower loan rates and don't charge the fees other banks do. Whatever your personal journey, Security Advantage is here to offer your smart, smart, smart financial solutions. Join today at securityadvantagesu.com, securityadvantagesu.com, win a bank and thrive life member MCUA. The George Agency serving insurance needs in Carolina for over 35 years. Open enrollment's right around the corner, John. I think it's about two weeks away now. If you don't have insurance through your job, if you don't have insurance through your seasonal work or whatever it is, check out the guys, jordanc.net, Bradley Wayne Richardson and the crew, or if you're a small business owner, they get you out there too. Wherever you are in the state, give them a call. It doesn't matter where you are. They can help you out there. Kona, our games of the week there. They offer a synergistic approach for the spine, skeletal system, nervous system, and sporting structures. Meaning total quality care for optimal health. Three convenient locations in Spartburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Kona.care, that's Kona.care. And then stock up, stock down by Founders Federal Credit Union. Get your head in the game of Founders Federal Credit Union and see how a Founders membership could elevate your financial game. Train your financial skills with a wide array of financial tools and services. Visit relaxjoinfounders.com today to see if you fall off membership. Relax with Founders Federal Credit Union. So appreciate all our friends there along with Hannah Engineering we'll get to here in a minute, John. Let's take a look at the 5A slate. You know, I know we listed out five games of the week here. We could have had 10. Like, there's yeah. so many big ones. I'm sure we'll stop as we get to them. But, man, oh, man, it's a, just a huge week of football. Let's look at this 5A slate and break down a few games as we go through it. We'll have Lexington at Aiken. Strafter will go to Berkeley. Arby Stahl will go to Kane Bay. Mm -hmm. Chapin hosting White Knoll. Clover will be at Fort Mill. As we talked about, one of our games of the week, uh, the game of the week in 5A, Dorman going to the reservation, play yep. Gaffney. Wanda will be at Goose Creek. This game, I think, could be a little bit bigger now um, after what we've seen the last few weeks. Malden at Hillcrest. Malden playing some good defense lately. Could be a problem for Hillcrest uh, yep. coming off the loss against T.L. Hanna last Friday. Yeah, Golden Strip rivalry, always a fun one. I believe I read, uh, I think the series is 34-33 to all-time Malden. So if Hillcrest wins this week, they tie it up. I think they've won five or six in a row. Uh, play some great football. You know, Bennett Judy went out late last week with a, with an ankle or knee type thing. 
I think he's going to play. You know, being a sprain, not a tear. So he had to yeah. ice it a lot. I think he's going to be back in the game uh, this Friday night. It should be a great ball game there. You know, Malden just kind of found something with the running game with Devin, Orte- Devin Ortega there, really pounding the rock. And honestly, to beat Hillcrest, you probably got to do that. You got to kind of yeah, can hold the ball a little bit on them. I think if Hillcrest gets it, they'll get explosive. That's one thing that Teal Hannon did a great job last week of. They didn't let Hillcrest have any really big plays. Uh, you know, couldn't could get McFadden deep, couldn't get Neal deep. You know, Coldren broke a few nice runs. Yeah, so I think Malden's got a chance here. Yeah, this rivalry game is always tight. I like Hillcrest at home. Chandler State, especially if energy plays. I'm leaning the Rams here in this matchup. Well, this definitely want to keep an eye on. Yes. Uh, Dutch, Dutch Fork at River Bluff. Pretty big game here. I think Dutch Fork takes this game. Yep. But I still like what River Bluff's got going on. They are. Like they're playing they well. There. They're playing well. They're probably going to be in that three seed. Well, they're going to play White Knowles. They beat White Knowles. They're probably going to three seed in that yeah, region. Lexington. Correct. That's yes. That Lexington's yes. in that region, I believe. Yeah, so they're in that three seed. That'll put them in the lower state bracket 5A. Which actually is probably an advantage uh, instead of having to go to the upstate. So, uh, big win, big game here to see if Riverbluff can compete with Dutch. We'll see what happens there, but you got to lean Silver Foxes in that one. Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah, Blackwood going to Rock Hill. Carolina Forest beat Sockasty. Big game there for that region. Um, Carolina Forest, Sockasty, neither one have a playoff matchup locked in yet. They've got to win another game. Um, if Sockasty wins here, I think it created a three way tie for third place. A big game here. Carolina Forest had a tough loss to Sumter. We had a 21 all. You know, 21 and an answer to Sumter to lose the game there. Uh, but you get your match up there. Impressive to put 21 up on Spartans. Yes, very true. <laughs> to begin with. Warland Springs will be at Spartanburg. Nation Ford going to Spring Valley. St. James is hosting Sumter. Ashley Ridge will be at Somerville. Big game there. Uh, I think that's probably region championship of the line. Uh, Somerville yes. playing some great football right now. Uh, McMurray at quarterback. Marquez Spell, Spell, Spell. I think the running back's doing a great job there. Yannick Smith out wide. The defense has been strong all year. Uh, Somerville. Wins this game, I think. I think they win the region. They're going to be a fun team to watch in mm-hmm. playoffs uh, in their lower state. I think they've got a good chance to really make a move. But we'll Fort Dorchester going to West Ashley. Fort D still without Zoltan Osborne. I've not heard a late update about him. Uh, you know, the quarterback Trey Ryan's playing well, filling in. They need him back to make any kind of run, though. Yeah, they, and they're still a good team without him. Yeah. They're a very good team without him. But, uh, yeah, they – if they want to do what they want to do this year uh, in the playoffs, they need they need uh, Mr. Osborne back. And then T.L. Hanna, off of their big win, they will be going to Woodmont to close out five. This is a game to look out for. I think T.L. Hanna is clearly the better team. But last week, T.L. Hanna clinched the region. And even if they lose this week, they still win the region. You wonder if maybe they take the foot off the gas a little bit. Yeah. Especially next week, they got a bye week. The, the odd week 10 bye week for T.L. <laughs> Hanna. Um, a, a lot of weird stuff going on for that program right now. I think they win, but keep your eye on that because that's one. That if they come out and, you know, lay the hammer down, like, okay, this Hill Hannah team is, like, for real. Yeah. If they let off the gas a little bit, you, you, you worry a little bit again about that one. But uh, mystery matchup there between Woodmont and Hill Hannah. But and if they do let off a little bit, if they do, you know, take it easy, this is the week to do it. Yeah. This is the week to do it. You, you can afford that. After what they did last Friday, you've earned that right if they if they do happen to do that. Uh, yeah, Lex, or going into four right now, you'll have Lexington. They'll be taking on Aiken. Um, mm-hmm. A little bit of a, almost like a college type schedule yeah. matchup here where you go out of region late. Yeah, that season. is odd. That is odd. You'll have Westside going to Easley. This is an interesting game that I, at the beginning of the year, this yeah. was not on my radar. Yeah. But now, this is an interesting game here. Easley playing uh, much better football this year than I expected them to. Yep. And Westside's putting together a very good season. A, Big win for them last week. Yeah, I'm thinking a lot of points in this one, honestly, John. Um, you know, Caleb Sutton does a great job at easily the freshman quarterback. is really dynamic, really balling right now. West side, Cutter Woods slinging it around. Uh, Hunter Puckett, the running back, uh, had a big game last week running the ball as well. Big win over Greenwood surprised me there. I think I kind of want to pick easily here at home. Yeah. But this could be a fun game, I think, to watch. I. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great quarterback play. Yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. That's going to be a really, really fun game to watch. This will be an interesting game now, too. Greenwood going to Greenville. Greenwood, uh, I feel like they've typically had Greenville's number uh, the last few years. This game is going to be at Screen Stadium, Greenville. Greenville's the better team right now. Um, I like Greenville in this game, but, you know, this is – Greenville yeah. has just kind of been a, a little bit of a thorn in the Red Raiders' side lately. So they've got to come out. They've got to be ready to go. Especially with Greenwood coming off that loss. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to be focused. They're going to be ready to go. Uh, that, this is going to be a really fun game to watch here. Greenville should win this game, though. 
It's a contrasting styles. You know, David Greenville aired out, fell around. What um, you know, Greenwood obviously with the wing T there. Like I said, they, I think they beat Greenville a couple times the last couple times they played. I feel like they're a little more physical. It seems like in the past. This is a big game for Greenville to show how you know for real they are. They kind of got written off early in the year because they lost those games in, out, out, out of region. They've really played hard, played well, but it's still kind of flying under the radar a little bit here. I think this is a game to kind of prove that they are the real deal. Um, you know, I know Major Bennett committed to Tennessee this weekend. He's a stud outside. Tyler Brown as well. You know, Drummond kid throwing it around there. You know, Pepper and Sherman running the ball. Lots of playmakers at home. I think I like Greenville, but if Greenville wins this game, I'll not be surprised at all. Yeah, yeah, no real I uh, you know, that, that's just the way this series has gone the last few years. Um, but I tell you what. I think even even if Greenwood is able to win this game, I think Greenville's going to get respect yeah. for whoever they play in the playoffs because those teams are going to, if, if they're doubting Greenville, they're going to put in that tape, yeah. and they're going to see that offense and go, oh, boy. Yeah. And we I, got our hands full now. And if Greenwood wins this game, get a three-way tie for the region championship, Greenwood, Greenville, Westside all have beat each other. So we'll see what happens. We'll see we what take happens. Out we take out Greer, we insert West Side into the region, and we have the yeah. potentially same same uh, predicament here at the end of the season. Uh, any great great to have, Man. great to have, great to have. It's so competitive, uh, and three pretty good teams. Mm-hmm. We'll have Wade Hampton going to Greer. James Island will be at Hilton Head. James Island keeps winning. They got a big matchup yeah. next week. Lucy Beckham. Uh, I think they win this one again here, but they're playing some great football down there. Yeah, yeah. This uh, this is a chance for them to to keep that rolling. I think they get the win. Friday going down to Hilton Head. Um, they'll be an interesting team. They've kind of flown under the radar mm-hmm. a little bit. We'll have Catawba Ridge at Indian Land. Undefeated Catawba Ridge. Indian Land really fall off a cliff the last two weeks. Yeah. I think the Copperheads win this one. Um, kind of a look-ahead spot, though. They've got Northwestern yeah. next week. I think uh, I think the Copperheads will win it. Um, they're playing some really good football right now. Yeah, they, they've got to certainly be focused going yeah. this game. They can't, can't be looking ahead for sure. Yeah, I like Copperheads in this one, too. We'll have Westwood going to Irmo. York will be at Lancaster. For a playoff spot, I believe, there as well. Both teams don't have a win in the region yet. They need one. Um, fun game. Yeah, and, you know, this is uh, these are two good teams. It's, it's a bummer that yeah. one of these teams is probably not going to the playoffs because mm-hmm. I think both of them are certainly worthy of a, of a playoff run. Not Maybe not a playoff run, but to play. For sure. Playoffs. We'll have Eastside going to Lawrence. Carlton County will be at Lucy Beckham. AC Floor going to Lugoff Elgin. Demons. Demons. You smell an upset? You smell an upset? No. Not, no? Not in this one. They had a great win last week against Richard Northeast. Great job by them to, to pull that game out. But uh, Richard Northeast is not AC Floor. AC Floor is uh, don't let you put off the gas, though. Yeah. And they don't when they play Lugoff. Yeah. I don't know what Lugoff ever did to AC Floor, but they uh, they like putting up nickels on, on Lugoff when they play. Bluffton will go to May River, North Augusta, hosting Airport. Airport dressed 19 players last week, I read. is a 4A school. Not sure what's going on there. Um, very worrisome. North Augusta playing some good football here lately. Uh, started really in region play. They've really gotten hot. I think they went again at home at the Jackets Nest. Yeah, especially if we're, if Airport is going to be that thin. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's, that's, you know, that's 1A school numbers, honestly. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of there. You'll have South Lawrence going to North Myrtle Beach. The Real will be at Pickens. Ridgeview hosting Richland Northeast. Midland Valley going to South Aiken. South Point hosting Northwestern. Fun game here, John. Um, that was one, you know, after week zero, we're like, this is going to be the biggest game in the state. Because, you know, that was when Northwestern had just rolled Rock Hill. Yeah. South Point rolled Gaffney. Both teams have had a little bit of struggles here and there. South Point had a couple tough losses there. Um, Northwestern had a tough loss to Gaffney, of course. So they have not been as impressive as they were early in the year. Still a really good big match, a really fun match up here. South Point at home is always tough. You know, South Point, they've got to win this game to have a chance to get a home playoff game. Because yeah. if not, I believe it comes down to, to Catawba Ridge Northwestern 1-2 next week. So yeah. South Point has to win this and have a chance to play at home. I'm still a little worried about the offense. They had a nice number at Indian Indiana last week. I think it was 19-7. to Offense still wasn't really there. I think you've got to score points to beat Northwestern. And Northwestern wins this game. Um, this should be a fun matchup. I do too. There's there's so much talent on that South Point team that you can't rule them out of any exactly any right. Game. Expect, you know, especially a little bit of a cross town cross town rivalry game here. I expect this game to be a very very good very competitive ball game. But Northwestern should win. Mm-hmm. Um, this game this could be a very interesting game as well. Hartsville going to West Florence. Hartsville 
playing some really good football yes. as of late. Yes, yes, yes. They kind of found something that second half against uh, South Florence. Put some points on the board there. Came back, uh, smoked Wilson last week, smoked Myrtle Beach two weeks ago. Jayshon Anderson, Carmelo McDaniel, McKendry Douglas really got it going offensively there. Defense playing better and better, too. You know, shutting out Wilson tonight, that's a pretty good offense there. The shutout was big for them. West Florence playing great football. You know, their signature win, obviously. They've beaten two 5A teams. They beat Lexington week zero, and they beat Burns. Two pretty good 5A squads there. Very two very good. nice wins. Uh, just that that region, you get no, no weeks off. No weeks off in that region. And next week, uh, West Florence got South Florence. I mean, it's just you don't get a time off. No, no bye weeks in that region there. That's going to be a great football game. Um, I'm leaning West Florence at home. But Hartsville, I mean, they're playing as good as you can play right now. Yeah, they're playing their best football. That you know, they've got it. They're right where they want to be. Yeah, they you're got a chance. Right where you want to be, you want to be playing your best football this time of the year. They're doing it. Um, this is going to be an excellent, excellent ball game. I, I'm leaning West Florence just because they've been playing so good yeah. all year. But um, I, this is going to be a great game. No doubt about it. It's going to be a great game. And then uh, close out for a Myrtle Beach will be at Wilson. Another big region matchup there. Yeah. Myrtle Beach struggling. They need a win. I think they're both. I think both these teams make the playoffs, but obviously it's just for seeding purposes now. Um, I think Myrtle Beach needs a needs a win here to kind of bolster their confidence a little bit after after everything they had in the last couple weeks for those yeah. guys. And, and they've been playing better in the second half of the season than the first half. They yep. got off to a rough start. Uh, you know, kind of getting whooped down at Zip Stadium. Yep. And uh, you know, first game against Camden. But they picked it up a little bit. Yeah, a couple comments here. Uh, Tony says, Lamar is still rolling. They are. That's a yeah. huge matchup. We'll yes, get to that here in a little bit. Uh, Derek says, what's up, my dude? Good, good, good to be in the in the numbers again. Let's go, Wild Gators. <laughs> good to have you in here, Derek. We appreciate you. Yeah, we got Lamar Lake. You'll talk about here in a minute. Yeah, a big matchup. Big time game. Zach says, Aiken is playing Lexington because it's a, a five-team region for you. That makes sense there. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And, then J- okay. and then James says, go Stallions. Like I said, it should be a great matchup. South Point, Northwestern on Friday. Um, always a fun game when those two get together. Going into 3A now, we got Southside going to Belton Honey Path. Room will be at Carolina. Blue Ridge is going to Chapman. As we talked about one of our games of the week, Chester hosting Clinton. Mm-hmm. Clinton, unfortunately, going to be out with, without their quarterback and safety. That makes that game very, very interesting now. Cameron will be at Crestwood. This is... Put a star by this game. Crestwood's a pretty good football team. I think this could be a, a very close game here. Yeah. Uh, you know, Crestwood really fallen under the radar this year. Yeah. I know they've lost to Sumter. That may be their only loss. Um, Perhaps. They lost by seven to Sumter. I have to look at their, their record. That may be their only one there. Camden really been under the radar since that loss to Gray. And they took a couple losses there to Hartsville, Gray, middle of the season. Haven't been talked about a whole lot. Uh, plays good football there. I'm thinking a low scoring game here. Two good defenses. I'm going Camden close. If Camden plays how they ought to play, yes, I think they win as well. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fight. This game's going to be at Crestwood. That's going to make a difference. It's going to be a really, really good game. Yeah, I, I expect a – this might be a game where if someone scores 20, they win. Mm-hmm. I think this would be a really good game here. Yeah, I'm sure our friend good. Ryan Franklin will be there. Ryan, if you're there, send us some, send us some up. That should be a great ball game. Uh, also, a quick stat here. Crestwood is 6-2. and two. Lost to Richard Northeast week zero, and then lost to Sumter by seven a couple weeks later. It's only okay. two losses. So, good season there for, uh, there for the Knights. We'll have Pendleton going to Daniel. Darlington hosting Lakewood. Dreer at home against Gilbert. Union is going to Emerald. Georgetown at home against Aner. Phillip Simmons at Hanahan. Fun game there. Phillip Simmons, you know, going up a class this year to 3A. Haven't been quite as successful as they were the past couple of years. Um, Hanahan plays great football. Had that, you know, weird mid-season, mid- mid-season situation with the coach there. Had a tough loss to Woodland a couple weeks ago, but still playing some good football there. I think Hanahan wins this one at home, but should be a fun game. I think so, too. And more that we've seen from Woodland, maybe not a bad loss for Hanahan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're still a really good team. Yeah. But Woodland, very good team. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, but, yeah, that'll be a good game there. Orangeburg wilkinson will go to Lord Richland. Loris will be at Manning. Probably for number two in the region here. Uh, good chance of that. Loris won their first game last week without their quarterback. We talked about how he went out with a love broken leg. They moved last year's quarterback to tight end. He's back quarterback now. Uh, Manny, tough loss to Dylan. But they were competitive last week against Dylan. You know, the Rams, he had yeah. a big game. Offensively, the quarterback played pretty well for them. 
Loris worries me with the new quarterback, but I, I've been riding those guys all year long. I think that defense is too much. I think you get a big play from Duke Bellamy. I think the Lions went on the road over the Monarchs. I'm going to take Manning at home. Okay. I, that's, I mean, seriously could go either way. I think that's a big, I like big matchup. I like that they were – how competitive they were against Dylan. Mm-hmm. I'd like for them to keep that momentum rolling into this game, uh, especially with, with Loris maybe not being 100% mm-hmm. either. Lake C will be at Marlboro County. Buford going to North Charleston. Palmetto is hosting Fountain Inn. Brooklyn Casey at Swansea. Dillon will be at Waccamaw. Seneca going to Wahala. Crescent at West Oak. And then Wren will host Powdersville. Big rivalry game there. Um, I guess technically for the region championship. You know, Wren's undefeated in the region, so is Powdersville. I think Powdersville is the better team by a good good margin. But these rivalry games, you never really know. You know, Wren has really figured it out. They've really you know, focused on Trayvon West, uh, the big-time DB commit, actually just beat committed from Indiana a couple weeks ago. They played him at offense, running back, receiver, whatever. They've moved him around. He's been the focal point for them. They've found something with that because he's a, he's a dynamic athlete. I think Powder's really just too much firepower. You know, Thomas Williams, Drake Sloan, Eli Huggins, Eli Huggins as well, <laughs> both of them. Uh, Xavier Fowler, defensively, obviously, with, you know, Owen Lewis back and, and Harrison Jeffries back. They played some great ball all around. Their one loss, that that close loss to Hillcrest, no shame in that one. Not at all. I think Powders was a team that you know just they won the big region game already. They beat the BHP, kind of found the radar last couple weeks a little bit. I think the Patriots win this game. I think it might get ugly um, in this rivalry matchup. I, I see them winning. I think Red can score some points on them. I just don't think they can keep up. I don't see them able to keep up though in this one. A uh, couple comments here for moving to two way here. Let's see. Elvin Jones says, 96 high school is the best linebacker in the state. Najir Jones. Okay. I've heard of Najir. I've watched the change. He's a very good player. Yes, he can get it done, man. Uh, 96, uh, good defensively led by Najir there. Robert Altman says, just tuning in. Robert, appreciate you, man. We actually talked about Barnwell Woodland earlier in the show. When we get done, we'll post a time. You can go back and check it out earlier in the show there. Uh, great match up there. Hope we get to see you this Friday night over down at uh, down in uh, Barnwell for sure. Omar says, Trayvon from Johnson. Johnson's supposed to be a rebel. At the, imagine uh, Trayvon West uh, on that team. Man. He's a stud. Wow. Uh, really good player wow. there for Wren. Add him to that strong player mix. They'd be really, man, really dangerous there. But A um, lot of good football games in 3A, John. Let's talk through some of the 2A, uh, including, obviously, one of our games of the weeks in there. Yeah, so we'll lead off. Blacksburg will be at Abbeville. Lake Marion going to Academic Magnet. North Central at Andrew Jackson. As we talked about one of those games of the week, I, really, I, the game of the week for the state, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Woodland at Bornwell. Yeah, I do want to circle back to the Academic Magnet Lake Marion game. I know Jarrell's giving you a hard time last week. You said Academic Magnet. Oh, she said not be a sneaky good game. It was you not. Know, 55 to nothing. It was not. Um, but Academic Magnet, you know, they had a good year for those guys. But <laughs> Woodland Bornwell, though, is going to be fun. That, that one out. And now we see a 55 nothing game there. <laughs> Ryan says, you guys talk three A's yet. We just actually just missed you on 3A there, Ryan. Uh, Crestwood came in big time matchup. You can re- rewind when we get done and check that out. Should be a fun one there between the Knights and the Bulldogs. We'll have Pillion going to Batesburg, Leesville. Buford will be at Sherall. 96 going to Chesney. I would like to see 96 be good again. Yeah. yeah they, they haven't been um, quite the pedigree that I remember they were growing up. They, yep. they used to be one of the big time um, smaller programs in the state. I'd like to see them get better again. Yeah, I think they win this game. Um, you know, they've been fairly good this year. Five and three, Jim. They're not a bad team at all. Uh, so the defense is pretty solid there. Offense has been kind of up and down. Uh, had a couple of high-scoring games, a couple of low-scoring games. But I think they beat Chesney because Chesney's not very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They should win this game over Chesney. Then we'll have Central going to Chesterfield. Ridgeland Hardyville at Edisto. Eau Claire going to Fairfield Central. Keenan hosting Mid-Carolina. King Street hosting Mullins. Liberty will be at Landrum. Lee Central is hosting Andrews. Columbia will go to Newberry. Oceanside hosting Bishop England. Fox Creek will be at Saluda. I do want to circle back. I just to talk about, that, about those games here. Oceanside, another team, like we've had the number one, and I feel like they just, we haven't talked about them lately because they just haven't really played anybody. You know, like, I mean, they're still there. Yeah. They're still very good. Yeah. Um, they just keep doing what they do. And yes. It's just, I, I can't say somebody's going to give them a competitive game now, right? <laughs> I mean, not to the playoffs. I mean, honestly. Trails will be all over. Oceanside plays some great football down there, man. Coastal's doing a great job with those guys. They're, they're a lot of fun. And that Fox Creek Saluda game. Saluda, man, uh, they, I think they let one loss beat them twice. You know, losing so the last week. That yeah. kind of surprised me. Uh, we talked to Coach Young last week. He's like, you know, the key is to getting these guys to 
focus on Silver Bluff because, you know, they're in a small town. He's like, everything they're going to hear this week is going to be going to be about the Strom game. Nobody's came out the next game. We look back at the Strom. He's like, we've got to get those guys to move on. Yeah. So I think they had a tough time doing that last week uh, and took a tough loss to Silver Bluff. Saluda needs a win now. They're probably going to end up being on the road in the first round of the playoffs. Now, being a three seed out of that region, because Silver Bluff Saluda probably won two. Or Silver Bluff Strom Government seems to probably won two. You hate to see that for a really good team there. Um, but Saluda needs a bounce back win. I think they get over, get over Fox Creek here. But that was a, a, a tough loss last week over the Bull, or to get to the Bulldogs. Yeah, a little unexpected there. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's not something I like to see, but it, it does. It's cool to hear, you know, the kids are taking it how they did. You know, it's important to them. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, it, it means a lot to them to, to win that game. They're not just not just on the team so they can wear their jersey Friday at school. You know, it, it means something to win, to, um, you know, to, to be region champions and, and to be successful. But you, I think the good thing for Saluda is, hey, it, that's in the past now, mm -hmm. right? Re, reach in, that, that's over. There's nothing you can do about that now. Get back on track, win this game against Fox Creek, finish the regular season strong, and then get your payback in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, you can certainly do that. And now, big game for them, or well, big game for the region, strong them at Silver Bluff. Yeah, so we're bluff right on yes. kind of confidence now after you know that win last week against Saluda, and now this is really the de facto region championship now. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess it technically it has to be right. Yeah, I believe so. Um, so I guess if Silver Bluff wins, yeah, the, they'll be the region champions. They'll have it'll be just one region loss. Or are they undefeated? I think they're undefeated in region. region two, I believe. Um, so this is all of a sudden a huge game. Yes. Um, so th this will be fun. That game will be at Petticoe Junction. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that that's gonna make the difference there. But that's going to be a really, really fun game in 2A right there uh, yeah. between those two. I think kind of kind of a defensive battle, I'm thinking, the best one. Um, yeah. You know, Silver Bluff lost some pieces from last year's team that was very explosive. They still got Malik Williams, a quarterback back. Got a lot of young pieces around him that are kind of slowly growing up a little bit. But Williams is a playmaker. Um, defensively, they're playing some good ball there. Obviously, you've seen Strom Thurman firsthand. You know, the Edmund kid's a stud at quarterback for them. Getting him back has been huge for that team. But the defense is very, very good for the Rebels. Very good, and they play special teams well. They do. They got a good kicker, uh, clutch, solid. Uh, they they do the little things well. Mm -hmm. um, you know they they are they're uh, they're they're a pretty focused group. I think they're well coached, uh, well disciplined, and you know they they can make plays. Yeah, I'm, they can make plays. I'm, I'm really impressed with that defense. They got some ball hawks out yep, there. Yep. Uh, they, they are they're a fun team. They fly around. Uh, they, they got a lot going on. For that rebel squad. Yeah, you know, we're we're big fans of both those coaches, Coach Brian Silver Bluff, Coach Webb, and Strom gonna do a great job there between those two squads. So I think Strom Thurman, a little more firepower offensively. I, I like the hit kid out wide, a good receiver for those guys, like especially just key for them. I think they win a tight one on the road, but this is gonna be a, a barn burner, uh just knock down slope fest thing Friday night over Petico Junction for sure. I agree, and I, I like the way that Strom finished that game and saluted to. Yep. I mean that was a hard physical game throughout. Mm -hmm. And that last drive that they had in the football, yep. that, they were probably the most physical they were yep. the entire night, the last drive. Uh, that that speaks a lot. You know, you, people talk about kids and teams that are physical. Being physical is one thing in the first quarter. Yeah. Being physical in a 3-3 ball game on your last drive on the road, that's another level of physicality and toughness. Um, and that's that goes back to the coaching statue. I think that's instilling that in the offseason. Um, that's, that's a big deal for me. I, I think it's going to be a really, really good game. Yeah. Um, this will be a fun one. Well, that's that's another great thing for Tuesday. For sure. A couple comments here. Zach says Thurman still bluffs for the region championship. Robert says Abbeville's for real. Arteva says Thurman versus Bluff can be a good one, but he likes Thurman if they keep the off, offense off the field. Yeah, I think so, too. The key for, for Silver Bluff is getting Malik Williams loose several yeah. times. So I think if Thurman can, like I said, hold the ball a little bit, I think they win that ball game. Arteva says Saluda would have won the last two games. They had other players involved. Don't know about that one. I didn't get to see the see the last one, so I'm not sure how. Um, I, I didn't know if they, I didn't know they had who they had out in yeah um, that strong game. Yeah, Omar says Tua doesn't have region two, he, so he thinks that Saluda will be a home game, even as a region is a three seed. That could be possible. That's right, because they all kind of okay split ways. So they may do, they may have a home turn over that. Robert says he likes to bluff. Zach says Thurman's won six straight, including over a six A Georgia team, uh, That's and, That's and right. uh, Saluda. Omar says allowing three point three points per game in on defense in the region play there. That's incredible. Strong Thurman's playing, playing great football. I mean, this is going to be, like I said, I'm thinking a 20s, even maybe teens in this ballgame here yep. between these two squads. So 
Low scoring game, but I, I do like Sean Thurman here, I think, to win this one. Yeah, especially in a low scoring game. I think that, that bodes well for them. Yep. Well, let's finish up with some 1A talk here. Going into 1A, we got Allendale and Fairfax going to Bamberg Earhart. Baptist Hill will host Cross. Estill going to Bethune Bowman. Rich Spring Renetta at Calhoun County. McCormick will be at Calhoun Falls. East Clarendon going to Carver's Bay. Great Falls hosting Mackby. Hannah Pamplico going to Green Sea Floyds. Big matchup there for Region. Um, I think the winner of that is guaranteed a playoff spot. Loser still kind of on the edge there. Um, I like Hannah Pamplico. They played tough against Lamar last week. They put up. They played tough. I like the Raiders. They have been playing very tough mm -hmm. uh, back half of the season. Caught some bad breaks, just losing some close games. Yeah, quite close out. But yeah, I think uh, I think it's there for the, for Hannah Pamplico. I, I like them on this game as well. Scotch Branch will be at Hemingway. We talk about Lakeview going to Lamar. Always a fun game. Region championship here now with the redone regions. A lot going on for the game as well. Uh, this that's a really really fun game. Like to see that game have a lot on the line too. Yes, yes. You know Lakeview big big rivalry win. Let's look over Lada Shahid Dawkins. Big game for those guys. Lamar could keep keep rolling. We talked about last week. They're kind of flying under the radar a little bit. They, they lost are. to Andrew Jackson and Dylan. That's it. Um, you know Tyler McManus is a great player at quarterback for those guys. Coach Pierce doing a great job in his first season there. I think Lamar at home wins this game over Lakeview. Uh, I think Lakeview's best chance to get is to get them into a shootout. If they can really get up in the field, they got a chance there. But I like Lamar to win this one, I think, with, with behind McManus at quarterback. I'm going to go Lakeview. Okay. I'm going to go Lakeview. That's going to be a fun game, man. I, I wish I, I wish it could be 12 places at once. Yeah. yeah. There will be so many big games Friday night. We'll have St. John's. We'll go to Military Magnet. Southside Christian has some wear shoals. Let's talk about another one of our games of the week. Christchurch going to St. Joseph's. Huge, huge ball game for 1A there. Denmark Olar going to Wagner Sally. Branchville going to Whale Branch. Whitmire hosting Louisville. Louisville continues to roll now. They had the one tough loss to Andrew Jackson two weeks ago. They've kind of figured it out. They got the back. Got a couple injury, injured pieces back as well. Um, they're really scoring everybody, putting up big numbers. Uh, Whitmire has played well this year under Coach Andrew yeah. Campbell, first year coach. Very much. They're doing some, some good things there. Don't know if they have quite enough firepower to fill up the line. So I'll, uh, I'll say this last game, and then I want to make a comment here. Blackville Hill will be going to Littleton. Elko, uh, you said two things there before that there has a trend. Uh -oh. Lamar lost to Andrew Jackson. Louisville lost to Andrew Jackson. I know Andrew Jackson's 2 a it's a, good team. A team it's a good team. We hadn't talked much about early in the year, and as the season's gone, it's – Okay, the Volunteers are really good. Yeah, they yeah, are. They, they really are good really running back. Um, they play some tough football, too. They're, they're a team that year in, year out, they're going to be pretty physical, too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a team. I think they're still flying under the radar. Yeah. Bit. I want to keep – I keep every time I do my five, my my poll for two A, I I keep thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Sneak them in there, sneak them in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They would, be, they would be very, 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 very close. Well, they have been very close the last few weeks. So they're a team that's going to be – I think they're going to be a lot of fun to watch and, and – uh, Playoffs, they're gonna hurt some feelings. Yeah, no doubt about it. a couple of uh, skis of games. We got Heathwood Hall, Wilson Hall, Florence Christian First Baptist, Calhoun Clarendon Hall. Some pretty bigger matchups there in the the three and two A and one A ranks here in skis of this week as well. John, a couple comments here. Uh, Robert says bluff spreads the field side to side. Better play contain. Derek says yeah. John, he likes your Lakeview pick there. Uh, that is be a fun game. That's, man. That's gonna be a great one over there at Lamar for sure. Uh, you know, uh, two teams that. Have been not in the same region for a while. You know, I love seeing these two guys yeah. get together. Two, you know, perennial 1A powers. Cool to see them back in the same region, see them playing every year. That's a, that's a lot of fun there, John. But um, do you want to do they pick them or our polls next? What do you want to get into? Uh, well, I just talked about the polls. So let's do the polls. Let's do the polls. You want to do the big boys or 4A, 5A? Let's go 1A up. 1A, 2A, 3A. All here at one time. Sorry, that's why Gerald Ger made the graphic. <laughs> in 1A, we've got Christchurch, Southside Christian, Estill, Louisville, Johnsonville, all sorts of your votes, St. Joe's. We're going to see Christchurch and St. Joe's here this week. Next week, Christchurch, Southside Christian. Going to get some of the semantics here in 1A really quickly. Yeah, yeah, there might be a little bit of shuffling around before we... Uh, and I, I tell you what, you know, a, a team here that's 1A, or sorry, it's number one in the other poll we want to talk about there, Johnsonville. A team that has kind of slid down our poll last few weeks. They've had a couple of tight wins. Beat East, East Clarendon by seven last week. Yeah. You know, snuck by uh, Hannah Pamplico a couple weeks by a point. Had another win by a point. They are undefeated. So you got to get Coach Crib and those guys that. But they're not playing their best football right now. Um, no. I, I think that's kind of why we've had to move down a little bit in our polls. And, and I, I've moved. I, I've made a little bit of a shuffle here. If I can 
if I can look at my notes here that I made earlier this week, uh, you know, I I did have, or I still, okay, I did drop uh, Johnsonville back a little bit. Yeah, um, they're still a very I, good ball team. They're just not, like I said, not playing their best right now, it feels like. I just feel good about, um, I really feel good about that stuff. Yeah, uh, what yeah, they it's done, a good football team. Uh, it deserves some, it, it, it deserves yeah. some credit there. Yeah. Opinion. Looking out two way, number one unanimously, Oceanside Collegiate. We've had a number one since our polls come out. I think we were kind of ahead of the curve on that one, it seems like, John. Uh, yeah. Looking back at it, two Barnwell, three Woodland, two teams in our game of the week. Going to be huge there. Four Gray Collegiate, five Strong Thurman. Also receiving votes, Abbeville and Miriam. We were all over the place with two way poll. We all had some, some different folks in there. Um, but this is going to be, it's, it's such a fun class, John. Uh, you know, really, I mean, I think our top five is. Pretty dead on. I mean, I like can't we just agree with any of that. There, we just we just listed seven teams between that and the receiving votes, and we, I hadn't even mentioned Andrew Jackson. You know, some other squads that are really good too could easily go eight, nine, ten deep on two way. I feel like um, yeah. really good football there in that class. I mean, it's no secret how we feel about the, the top of that group, mm -hmm. but we'll find out a ton Friday. Yeah, on where Barnwell and Woodland stand with one another. Yep. Um, but you know, after gosh, really after Oceanside, or you say after Oceanside, Barnwell, Woodland, I mean. Gray, Strom, Abbeville, Marion. You yep. could put all playing great. I think you can put them anywhere from three to you know seven, all eight. Great. Yeah, and you, and you look at you know Silver Block. They're playing great. Saluda was number one until two weeks ago. I mean, hey, a couple more strong teams there. A, a team that I don't think any of them want to play is probably Andrew Jackson. Very true. <laughs> you know, Very they're, true. They're in the next two. I feel like that's Good. a great. That's a great classification. Um, I felt like we really were high on what 3A would be this year. And 3A is great, too. Yes. But 2A has turned into a really, really fun class this year. Yeah, 3A. we got Daniel, number one. Dylan, number two. Clinton, three. Powdersville, four. Buford, five. We all had the same five on that one there, John. Uh, pretty simple. I mean, this is just uh, so many big-time teams there, too. And I feel like the, I feel like the five, top five is kind of clear and a clear cut there for me. Yeah, and, you know, all each one, I think I've said this a, a couple weeks before, uh, a lot of these teams just have have had a different storyline yeah. this year. You know, Daniel, uh, you know, they haven't been super tested. Um, Dylan, so they've been tested a little bit more yeah. than Daniel yeah. has, but they've been more impressive. Yes, in my I opinion, so. than I expected them to be. Clint has just blown people off yep. the ball. He's been incredible offensively. Powersville has been. They they've won they've been playing yeah. some tough competition yeah. as much talent as anybody in the state probably offensively yeah honestly yeah. Uh, you know they're fine then Buford you know they're the one that got got moved down from four A to three A we know how good that defense is mm -hmm. down there for Buford and they just been taking care of this yeah day. they moved Casey Fields running back it's been a game changer for them uh, a couple comments here let's see Julie says let's go Louisville Lions and Ian Grissom yeah one of our players of the week there uh, Louisville plays great football there in our top five for sure Thomas says he could be wrong but he believes Johnsonville has a lot of injuries. That could be. Okay. I didn't check into that. Oh, yeah. I um, uh, I think I did hear the quarterback had an issue, but I thought he was back. Maybe not. But looking at okay. that, that could make some sense. They're not playing their best football for sure. There. Um, so you look now at four and five A, John. Four A, South Florence number one. You got West Florence number two. AC Flora third. Catawba Ridge fourth, and then a tie for fifth. Northwestern and Ridgeview. I had a tough time with this one too. Um, uh, there's a lot of really. Six, seven, eight teams. I feel like they could have been in that top five. Yeah, um, yeah. But this this is going to be fun to see. You get that one two matchup next week. South Florence, West Florence. We get Catawba Ridge, Northwestern next week as well. A lot of football to be played here in four A. Yeah, I tell you what. We we talk about how good the schedule is this week. Next week is going to be Man. high octane four A. That's yes. going to be really really good stuff. Yeah, looking over at five A. Dutch Fort number one. Dorman number two. Lexington three tied for fourth. Gaffney and Sumter also also receiving votes as TL Hannah there. This is a big big week for this five A. We get two A or we get number two and tied four. Dorman Gaffney this week. Next week we get Dutch Fork Lexington. Um, I, I five A. I'm still having a hard time figuring out. Kind of like I thought Dutch Fork's very good. I thought like Dorman's very good. I thought Hillcrest was very good. But after that I was like I don't know how you know are they all kind of a little step back or they, I, I don't know. I, I'm still kind of struggling with five A a little bit, John. Honestly. Yeah, you know there's. There's certain aspects, I mean, Dutch Fork is Dutch Fork. Um, there's certain aspects of the, these other teams that I really like. And yeah, I'm just, same. It, it's not so much that I don't like, it's just I'm, un, I'm unsure of. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to find out a lot about Lexington when they play Dutch Fork. Uh, that'll be next week, I suppose. Yep. We'll, yep. They'll play. 
Um, Dorman Gaffney is going to work itself out uh, Friday. I think that's going to be a Super Bowl game. Saltner, again, I, I don't know a ton to make out of them. I love that defense so good, yeah. but that the offense is, it scares yeah. me a little bit. It yeah. scares me. You know, if, you know, when they get to a game with the, a Lexington or Dutch Fork, what happens there? But it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. I, I think this is another region. You know, if Saltner were to play Dutch Fork and beat them, I wouldn't be super surprised. Yeah. You know, I, I think it is potentially that competitive. And maybe it's not, but I think potentially it's it's – very competitive there. Yeah, five days a lot of fun. So appreciate you guys checking out our polls. We'll post these here on our social medias here in a little bit as long as our as well as our message board. Hop in the locker room, moviechange.com. Let us know what we got right, what we got wrong, what your thoughts were. You know, everybody's seen different teams at this point in the year. So definitely let us know what you guys think about it. We haven't seen everybody yet. We're just doing what we can uh, to make that good. But John's gonna quick shout out to our friends again before we look into our uh, our pick'em stuff from last week. The George Agency. Serving this year in the of Carolina for over 35 years. Bradley Wayne Rich and the crew. Like I said, open enrollment's going up soon. If you don't have, you know, uh, interest in your job, maybe you're a seasonal worker, whatever it is, maybe you're a restaurant worker, check them out at georgiac.net. They can help you out, give you the best prices there. They won't charge you anything more than what it would cost to do it yourself, but they basically guide you through the process. It's certainly a great thing to do there. If you're a small business owner, check them out. They can help you out there too, the georgiac.net. Secure Advantage Federal Credit Union, whatever your personal journey, they're there to offer you smart financial solutions. Secure Advantage SU.com. That's Secure Advantage SU.com. Win a bank and drive a life member NCUA. Kona, Game of the Week sponsor there. Uh, they offer the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, payment, and pain management in the upstate. Locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Kona.care. That's Kona.care. And then our stock up, stock now for Founders Federal Credit Union. Get your head in the game of Founders Federal Credit Union. See how Founders Merchant could elevate your financial game. Trade financial skills with a wide array of financial tools and services. Visit relaxfoundfounders.com today so you can follow up membership. Relax Founders Federal Credit Union. And then Hannah Engineering, John, our sponsor of our Pick'em here. Week 8, Pick'em results are out. A lot of big scores last week, John. Yeah, uh, yeah, we had wow. 10 folks get 10 right that are tied for the lead. And then we had another 17 folks get 9 right there. Uh, Brandon B., Sherman C., Thomas D., Ryan F., Richard E., Matt M., Allie G., Corey T., Cam R., Brandon T., all got 10 right. John, you and I got nine. Jarrell got 10 last week. Uh, you know, a big week for everyone, honestly, uh, last week. So not a whole lot of movement, but hats off to those guys getting 10. Um, Hen and June doing a great job bringing us out each and every week. And our overall leader, John, we're getting close. Two weeks left. Jimmy S. has a slight two-game lead over Corey T. here at 68. Tied third, Sherman C., Dale B., Tom K., Ryan F., James M., all at 64. Still in striking distance, distance going to be very close there for yeah, those guys. You know, yeah. y you wonder if one of them may has a may have like a three or a four on there. They're trying to get jumped off. That'll be huge to kind of get that off of their off of their scoreboard there for sure. We've got uh, Brandon B, Tyler D, Corey R, Charlie L, Ray Shoddy, and Tony Twitty all at sixty two. Drilling out at sixty nine. John here at sixty four. A lot of big scores here. A lot of ground to make up still the last two weeks. Certainly could happen, but Jimmy has, has played well all year. I think he's had a lead most of the time here, uh, I believe, I in that so. overall I spot. So great so. job by Jimmy. Um, but just Corey a lot of making a big move. Too. He, he is. Been, he's he been is. on the weekly leaderboard uh, yeah. quite a bit lately. Cutting it to two here with two, with two weeks to go. So something could certainly happen there. But appreciate you guys hopping in. We've had a good group do it all year long. Uh, and hand engineers will, help, will really help us out with that. We've got our overall prize coming for the end of the year. Still figuring out what to do for the playoffs, John. I don't know if we want to do a new prize for the playoffs. If we're going to do something completely different, do like a bracket format, I don't know if we have the technical abilities to be able to do that. We've got to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. But we're trying to figure ability. out. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what to do with the uh, with the playoffs, but should be fun. Uh, should be fun. And speaking of playoffs, like I mentioned earlier, if you guys want to see the records for everybody, the region standings, go to our website at movingchains.com. Check out the 2022 season page. We have that stuff on there. We also have our road trip on there where we've been, where we're going, have a message board locker, and a lot of fun stuff on there for you guys. Also got all our social links, our YouTube links, our Spotify links. I want to make a pitch for you guys. Please follow us on YouTube. Um, we've had some issues with this platform that we're on right now. Don't want to say its name. We've had some issues with it. We're trying to slowly transfer, maybe some stuff over to there. So go follow us on YouTube. We appreciate that moving the chains there on YouTube, John. Our Friday Night Space is going to be a, a blast this week. Oh, There's yeah. so many big games. So if you guys haven't been a part of that, Twitter.com, moving chains, no V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S. Every Friday night about 10, 30, 11, we go live to basically do a live scoreboard show. We break down the game that we were at. We get callers from all over the state to hop in with different scores, get coaches hopping in and talk about games. We do a great job with that. It's a lot of fun. Definitely love to have you guys hop in and talk with us. Because if you were at a big game, I'd love to hear about it. This week especially, there's big games all across the state. Love to have you guys get in there and tell us about it as well. 
Check us out on Instagram at Moving Chains, M-O-B-N-C-H-A-I-N-S on there. Like our page here on Facebook. Share our video. Follow us. We appreciate you guys for doing that. We do, we'll be again live next Tuesday night for our preview show with John and I. We do a live recap show Sundays. Real and I do come that on podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc. We do uh, interviews. We had Stuart Young on last week. A couple of big guys coming up for next week. A lot of really good stuff there, John. Anything I'm missing that we have coming out um, leading to the playoffs that I'm, I'm not thinking about? I don't think so. Um, we will do a... I assume we'll do a playoff yeah. preview show. Yep. That, yep. That's yep. one of my favorite shows. That's of always, the fun, year. To always um, fun to do. Always fun to do. There. This classification, talking about the once the brackets released. Yep. Going through the bracket and, and kind of moving everybody around, thinking what we think, uh, what we think is going to happen. Yeah, a lot of fun there. Um, also, shout out to our players of the week: Markel Townsend at AC Flora, Bryson James at Clinton, Ian Grissom at Lewis. Still had big performances last week. Keep shooting at those stats, guys. Uh, we've got a couple weeks left. Love to get some new faces in there. You know, uh, I had a lot of fun this year getting learned about these kids. That's been really cool to do. But I think that's about it, John. Uh, it's been a it's been a fun show, man. So much good stuff going on across the state. I mean, but we could have talked for three hours, and I feel like. Yeah. You know, yeah. you and I and Drell had a super hard time uh, figuring out what the games of the week were going to be. I, I sent a list. Usually, I send a list of these guys like, "Hey, guys, here's 12, 13 games we could pick for our pick 'em, and a couple for for the game of the week." This week it was like twenty five. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to cut out of here. Super hard to do, but uh, a lot of good football across the state. Hope you guys got to a game. It's great football weather right now, John. Should be really nice on Friday night. Hope you guys make it to a game. Hope you guys join our Twitter spaces afterwards to, to check that out and chat with us. But it should be another fun field week of action. Yeah, it should be great. Uh, region championships on the line. It's going uh, to be a lot of fun. Yes, Derek says, you guys will be safe out there. Catch you next week. Appreciate you, Derek. Uh, if you make it to Lamar and uh, Lakeview, give us some stats. Love to hear from you on that. It'll be a lot of fun there. But, uh, for John Epps, I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our Moving the Chains Week 9 South Carolina High School Football Preview Show. We'll catch you guys next week.